Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, brother, your name is? My name is Zia Khan. And where are we? Well, we're in the Center for Islamic Development. Uh, it's on Roby Street on Halifax in Nova Scotia, Canada. In Canada, yes. And what is your role here? Well, I'm the, I guess you could call me the director. I'm the, literally the director of the, of the center. I'm also the imam. I do the khutbah here. I'm, we also have, we conduct a school, a full-time school from primary to, to grade 12 and we have our graduates going on to university and we have a plethora of activities that we deal with. Uh, we're now into the fourth, well the fifth day of Ramadan right. uh, in 2016. Right. Uh, how many years has uh, Ramadan been observed here? Well, r this is a brand new edifice, so this is our second Ramadan in this in this place. Actually the third because the first Ramadan was when it was just construction debris and, and they gave us the opportunity to pray here. We put on some cheap carpet and we prayed. So literally it's the third Ramadan that we are praying here, yes. The third. So some people might be thinking two, but it, it is yes, three. Yes. Uh, before you arrived here, you were a little bit uh, nearby and how did this property become available? So in 1998, we ha we we had rented a, a place right across there, it's called the Bloomfield Center. So we had rented a place and uh, we used to have some of our programs, uh, but they used to kick us out at 10 o'clock at night when the building is closing, we had to leave. It was a lot of, uh, there were many restrictions. And so in, in order to curtail or to curtail and to truncate this issue, uh, we said we need to get a place. So one day I was just going through the, the phone book and all of a sudden this place actually just popped up for some reason. I just called the owners and it happened to be on sale. And uh, we said, well, what are you, why is it not selling? Because it was on the market for a while. And they said they had an oil spill and no bank is going to actually give, give any, any loans or guarantees for it because it could have environmental damage. So nobody wanted to buy it with that. We told them, listen, we'll buy it. For 210000 we negotiated, which was very cheap. It was two old houses plus a big warehouse, a steel warehouse. So we said, this is fine for us. And we used to house the students on one side, have our offices and a little school and, and, and a, pl a place uh, to pray. So it was something of an exciting time where we actually got together and, and uh, molded as, as a group. And it was another venue for Muslims to meet. But then what was happening is the two old buildings in the front, they were actually going lopsided. No matter how much exterior beautification we did, it ended up looking horrible from the inside. And it was about time that we had to bring it down. And then when we brought it down, you can see actually videos on the, on, on the net. Uh, you will see that how we brought it down, the demolition is there, and then how we raised this. And this was really uh, a lost scent because we have, we finished it in about a year and a half, we had uh, about $6,000 starting off. And the previous building that we bought before that, we only had $1,000 to start off. We raised it, we finished it. Everything, every single thing that we told, told the public that we were going to do, in public in terms of Muslims at large, we did. We, we told them that we were going to buy this place, we did. We said we're going to, we need this much and we're going to finish it, we did. Uh, we did the second floor, the third floor, the fourth floor, and then uh, inshallah the, 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 new, the new idea is to go the, the, the fifth, the sixth and the seventh, uh, where we have to expand our school and expand our institute so that we can have language institute, different things, so we need also space in order to do that and down the road we need a, an income property which we're looking into so that we can self-sustain because you will not get professional beggars like myself all the time because it's difficult to stand in front of people in order to give, um, in order to continuously be asking. But this is something that I think very few people can do and do it successfully in terms of, because it takes a lot of energy out. You have to stand in front of people and, and the eyes that, you know, they they really like sometimes just telling you how it feels to have those eyes looking at you. You don't know what they're thinking, but I'm not that I'm insinuating something evil, although many have been so generous, but it's just still the idea of standing in front of people continuously and asking for donations. So we did that. We became, uh, 
we're not self-sufficient and no one's actually really self-sufficient except Allah. But we're trying to get as independent as possible in terms of seeking donations all the time. But we are, as a Muslim community, at, at, at a, such a cusp. Uh, we're not on a precipice that we're going to fall, but we're on a cusp to say that, okay, just like the Christian communities were, that you know we're moving to a direction where we're becoming more professional as communities and that we are trying to actually solidify our positions also. But it takes time. People have to realize that it takes time. So although an institution may be built, a masjid may be built, people could be talking bricks and mortars and all of these things. Oh, why are we doing this? But these edifices are necessary. And then after that, what they're forgetting is that the vision is also extremely necessary. It's crucial. Um, it can, you cannot do without the vision. So what I told the younger brothers, I said, look, us, we have to move on and, and pass away. And then the youth will take over, but you need to set a vision in there. And then they themselves, when they have the building, they will be able to do the works therein. Now, just to stay on vision for a yeah. moment, uh, you had said something the other day where people would fundraise, build the building, and then add the vision later. Right. You began your NIA with the vision first and then made the building fit the programming. Right. Some, something along those lines. That's right. So most, because I've traveled extensively in the, in the past and I really don't like traveling anymore, but um, I have seen many, many big massages. That, you know, they, they have their functions, but it's usually made as a big hall and then there's very few rooms or very, like it's almost made to the point of Okay, we're going to have a masjid with the dome and a minaret. That's what we need. That's what we need. So everybody's drum to say that's what we want. Well, we don't need that because the dome is there for acoustics. I mean, it's nice to look at. Nobody says it's not. It's ugly. I mean, it's beautiful to look at. But it's, it was there for acoustics before. Now we have speaker systems and all this. To waste half a million dollars or a million dollars on a dome, it's really in this day and age, it's, it's, it's uh, being, being spendthrift. So what we decide, what we found that many people would just have a place and then try to do something with it. We said, no, no, we want this, 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 and we, and we listed all of the things out. Actually, we had one of the brothers say, okay, list all of the things and draw a place of what kind of place we had. We actually do a place to have two football fields worth of activities. And then we had to, the yin and the yang approach, right? We had to bring it down to reality and then bring it so that we have the presence center here where we have the masjid, we have downstairs the overflow, we have the sisters upstairs overflow, we have the school, the whole length, then we have a mess, meaning an eating hall, we have offices, we have a dawah center, we have a, a, a videoing room, we have the fourth floor for, we have weights there, we can convert it into a table tennis area, we can convert it into eating. So we have all of this and plus we are also solar. We have solar tubes so that heats our in-floor heating and it takes, it takes the weight off of the, the burners because the burners cost us a lot of money. Each, each click is like 50 cents. So we want to destroy the clicks by having the sun's rays actually give us that during the winter as well as all of the seasons because the tubes function as well in the winter as they do in, in, the, in, the, in the summertime. Although the summertime is a longer period of the sun, but we, we are doing that. Although we have to go a long way to be really green, uh, because we're still using these plastic bottles, we're still doing things that are, you know, although we separate, uh, you know, our, our compost and all this, but we still keep buying plastics and plastics all the time. I mean, we just, it, is, it has to be a paradigm shift, but we're working towards that. Yeah. Um, towards that, yeah. there are Muslims who have their own projects elsewhere in the world, elsewhere in the country, right. and they have found their way here to see what you're doing. And what is it that they are finding and taking back to their projects? Well, what they're finding in different parts of Canada, even they've come to ask is, how do you do it and what did you do? Well, we said, well, what do you really want? I mean, your shura, your, your council has to sit together, then what do you really want? I mean, people just get there and say, we want a masjid, right? Oh, Masjid Aisha, we're going to make Masjid Aisha like back home. And they're collecting there for 20 years and Masjid Aisha is never built, right? So, I mean, it, it can't be like that. So what they said, I said, well, look, you know, what is it that you're looking for? What you're looking for, then you design built after that, right? 
then you see what is it that you really need, what, what was lacking and, and what can augment your programs and how can the flow be good and, and where can the sisters come in because they're always relegated to some little corner and they have nothing and it's a big wall, they can't see anything and you might as well let them be home and feed a little, you know, a uh, YouTube video to them, what, what's the difference, right? So I think we have changed that. Uh, so what we said, the sisters can be here on the same floor, seeing the Imam so on. And there's a nice little thing, it's, it's, it's like a privacy curtain, uh, not really, you can't really see much. They can see out, they can have their privacy, and, and at the same time they can see very clearly, it's all open. And if they have kids, the sisters, they can go upstairs with the kids. And if the brothers also would like to step up and deal with the kids, they can go downstairs because there's a, there's a men's overflow downstairs. So we, have, uh, we, we had to design it in a way that all of the problems that we faced in the other buildings, how could we actually improve and how could we, how could we better facilitate or how could we better manage our own communities. Uh, outlooks and and wishes too because sometimes you know we always get that there's no place to meet there's no place to eat there's no place to sit there's no place to sleep there's no place to shower what do we do how do we do that where do we go so all of these questions have to be answered and really have to be in a in a meeting where people have true sincerity to to do the things that they really put out to do and not just talk and drop the ball all the time and that's why the youth I think they're fed up and people are fed up and that's why they say, well, how did you raise it? Well, I, I told them this is what we're doing and we did it. This, we, it cost us $40,000 to raise the, 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 the solar tubing and all of the projects and the hot water tanks and all of those things. We raised it, we said it, it's done. You can go outside, you can go a little bit far away and you can see on the roof and there's 210 tubes, right? You will see the whole contraption, although it's there in the video, but you can see it yourself right from the street. So everything we said we we're going to do, we did. And I think that's where the credibility comes forward. So sometimes our, some, some of our communities, they really can't go forward because they have a credibility issue. They say something and then they just leave it. Or the roof is leaking. So you raise the monies for it, but the roof is still leaking. It should be finished. So somebody says, okay, my monies went in the right direction. Not that somebody stole it, but they just dropped the ball because it's volunteers. Everyone's volunteers, although most of us are volunteers here, but we said we're going to do it in a different fashion. Right? Yeah. The, perhaps we can close with uh, the thing which most impressed me was very simple. It was the buttons in the elevator. That it goes to button floor four, right. and yet there are additional buttons which suggested to me that you had planned for, you, you've given yourself the option for additional floors uh, and you design that into the elevator. Right. Often when we build our organizations, not specifically buildings, but we build our, we design our systems to just be limited and then we want to expand, it's like, oh, and it costs so much more in, in personnel, in design, and why did you how did you come up with that uh, perspective? I knew that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, they always say that, you know, you have to be realistic. I'm an uh, idealistic person, you know, I dream. I'm like, my dreams are big for them. I, I wanted a car park underneath and a bicycle station and a moped station. <laughs> I dream a lot of things. I mean, it wouldn't be enough for your video to take, but because idealists are the ones who actually end up completing things, not the realists. You need the realists to actually put you in check, but the idealists are the ones who really go forward. So even in the footprint, when they were doing the footprint, I told them, and the delay was one and a half months, I told them you have to put the allowable limit in terms of height in the footprint. They said, but we're only going four floors plus the basement. I said. I don't care, you have to put it in the footprint because even if I don't go as, as, as a head of an organization, go up, somebody after me will. So you have to give them that you can't crush this building down now and then try to put the footprint. So we had the footprint, it was a bit of a delay, it can actually take, it's on bedrock, it can really take 12 floors. 12. 12. But we had to go eight because of height restrictions. And now we found out because we made the masjid roof a little bit higher 
and every other floor a little bit higher to give that airy space. Uh, and you can see these are coffered roofing, so it gives the, like the Roman Colosseum kind of thing that yes. gives you a space. It's really not much, it's like a foot, so every foot ate away at our space, so we only have three more floors allowable. And on top of that, we're going to put like a, a, a window and, and, and let the light a come skylight. in, as skylights, and then have our solar tubing also on the roof so that we can actually uh, um, get our heating and all of those things from the rays of the sun. So yes, it was there and, and that's why even, even our Shura group sometimes overlook those buttons. So I never tell, I never told anyone about those buttons and the only one that figured it out was you. Which <laughs> Somebody is why came I asked to, about it. Totally from outside. Nobody ever questioned about those buttons. They just thought it was just random buttons, right? Oh, yeah. It, it's, uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's the buttons, it's something as simple as that, but yeah. it, there is so much complexity behind the simplicity of one, two, three, four more buttons. Right, right. Um, Brother Zaya, yes. uh, thank you so much for your time and yeah. your uh, masjid community's hospitality yeah. to me, 30 masjids. No, no problem. Um, uh, we'll do the best to get your story out to inspire others because we remind each other, we yes. learn from each other, and uh, we wish you Ramadan Mubarak. Uh, and I personally have to come back on my own just, yes, just to. Uh, just to be here. Yes, you're a wonderful person to well, deal with. Yeah. May Allah bless you, inshallah, in your endeavor. Thank you. Yeah, no